the motion that we have to have for electronic meeting, would someone be so kind as to read that off for us? Uh, Council member, this is John Cooper. I'll read it and then someone can read that motion. Thank you. Pursuant to Governor Lee's executive order number 16 regarding electronic meetings as extended by executive orders number 34 and 51, I make a motion that this committee meeting agenda constitutes essential business of the Metro Council and that meeting electronically is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans in light of the COVID-19 outbreak. So moved. Is there a second? Okay. All right, thank you. So uh, with that, the personnel committee is uh, brought to order. I will take the roll. Uh, let's see, I see Councilmember Young, Withers, Sulfat, Rutherford. Do we have, there's Councilmember Roberts. Councilmember Roberts, we've just called the meeting to order. I can't quite hear you. I think you're still muted. Can you hear me now, Brett? I can hear you now. <laughs> so uh, we have ju okay. we just called the meeting to order, so I will turn it over to you. Okay, great. Have we read the motion uh, pursuant to Governor Lee's executive order? We have. Great. Well, we'll start with. Um, Council Member Suarez, uh, first one on the agenda, and that is elections and confirmation. Council Member Suarez's term on the Metro Action Commission ends on 31st, 2020, 31st, 2020. The Personnel Public Information Committee must select a representative for next year. Do I have any nominations? So I think, I think this is where we will bring it up and then we'll vote at the next meeting. Is that, can, can someone confirm that please? Uh, I'll say this is John Cooper. That would be up to the committee. You could um, take a nomination and um, select someone now, or you could take a nomination and do it at your next meeting. Uh, either way is fine. If we don't have anyone being nominated, should we wait until the next meeting or should I just give a little bit longer? Uh, you could give it a couple, few more seconds and see if someone wants to nominate um, or is interested in serving. And if not, we could do it next time. I Great. would like to nominate, Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. I would, I would like to nominate Brandon Taylor. That's what he gets for not being here. That's exactly right, Council Lady Suara. I like that. I will second that. Do we have any any other nominations? Is there anyone else that's not here we can nominate? So, Count, Mr. Cooper, I would like to ask if that is our only nomination. Is I Yes, you could uh, entertain a motion to elect by acclamation. Okay, I would like to. Madam Chair, I would move to cease nominations and elect uh, Brandon Taylor by acclamation. Thank you, uh, Councilman Young. I like that idea. Um, or do I have a second? Second. Okay. And um, Mr. Cooper, just to be clear, if Councilman Taylor is not ready to serve in this capacity, does he have any say so in this? He could decline the position and then the committee would have to elect someone else at the next meeting. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes. 
If I may add, uh, uh, jokes aside, I did not just nominate him just because he's not here, but also I look at what the Metro Action Commission does, having served on that board. Uh, I think it, it goes well with the constituents that uh, Councilmember Taylor serves, and I think that it will be a good addition to that uh, to that board. Uh, so that was the rationale. It was just it wasn't just because he wasn't here, uh, but I do think that uh, he will be able to do more uh, with his constituents and be able to serve well on that board. Council Lady Suara, I served on that board for two years as well, and I found it amazingly fulfilling. And I think Councilman Taylor has all of the necessary elements to be a fantastic member of that board. Mr. Cooper, I have one other question. I served with Council Lady Van Rees, and I know that Councilman Pulley and Council Lady Murphy are serving together. Is there just one person rotating off, or are there two that we need to nominate for this position? Not sure. Let me look at the agenda. I can it's answer like that. It's just one that's rotating off. Okay. I can answer that. I think the personnel committee gets to do one and the else uh, committee gets to do one. So I'm doing personnel right now and Sharon Taylor is doing the else department, the else committee. So I think that's how we got to have to, but our committee only gets to do one. Great. Okay. Well, with that motion, and I think we have a second, I'd like to, to move that Councilman uh, Taylor is our nominee. All in favor? Aye. 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 And you'll have to forgive me, I, I was not here for the role. Cal I see Councilman Young, Councilman Withers, Councilman, Council Lady Suara, and Council, and I, and is Council Lady Hauser or Councilman Rutherford, either one in attendance? Rutherford here. Great. Thank you, Councilman Rutherford. Okay, so I'm, I'm assuming that is four in favor and zero against. Well, one, two, three, four, five in favor, zero against. So we will, we will move on. Next on the agenda is Bill BL 2020-387 by Hancock, Evans, and others. It amends the Metro Code of Laws pertaining to health insurance benefits for members of the Metro Council after they leave office. And there's also a proposed amendment by Councilman O'Connell. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. And is Council Lady uh, Hancock on this call? Yes, I'm here, Madam Chair. Great. Would you like to, to discuss this? Yes, absolutely. So um, I brought this bill to the table because I first heard about this during the budget process. I was on the call between uh, Council at Large Suara, who was hosting a budget chair Mendez, and he was talking about how there wasn't really much more we could cut, that we've cut the fat off the budget, we've cut into the meat, and we can't cut the bone. He said, except for this um, health package that just gets to be a greater and greater cost each year because of the cost of health care. And it's um, it's an unprecedented package in our peer cities or our neighboring cities. They don't do this lifetime benefits for someone that has only served eight years. It was um, in 2013, our Metro employees went under a restructuring where they went from two different um, vesting options of five years or 15 years, and they were all switched to 20 years from then on in 2013. So in 2014, we did a comprehensive review of our benefits and and compensation and by an outside company, Deloitte, and the information that came back from them had two recommendations for council. One was to raise our salary, and two was to cut the health benefits because no other peer city does this. And um, so what we've done in this, um, we did just get a salary raise with the beginning of this term, and this health benefits package would fulfill the recommendations from that independent survey. It would also put us more in line with Metro employees. We have over 9,000 employees that it takes them 20 years to be vested and they see us trotting in for eight years and then trotting out with a lifetime opportunity. And then our citizens that just had a 35 or 
percent tax increase are seeing that we are continuing with this unprecedented package. And I think it would be a great um, stick to them as well. I know that my constituents bring it up time and time again. And so I told them that I would go to council and see if everyone else wanted to, um, to work on this fiscal responsibility. Thank you, Council Lady Hancock. Are there any, and is there anyone on this committee that would like to speak to that? Yes, Madam Chair. Recognized, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, I want to speak against the bill. Um, I want to preface it by saying that right now I'm not taking the benefit and it does not impact me. Uh, but I listened to the conversation intently yesterday in the Budget and Finance Committee. And I heard most of our colleagues talking about the impact of taking away this benefit. It's a, it's a fact that for many of us, this job creates a part-time pay is a full-time job. And what we run into is that if we take away the benefit, uh, there will be, we might be limiting ourselves into people that will be running for this position, and we'll be limiting it to people that can afford to have insurance on the side. I heard about two of my colleagues talk about having to leave their jobs in order to be able to run for council. And you all know that if you have a side job and you're trying to do this, it's just so much, especially for the district council members. And so if this is part of the benefits and part of the reason why people are running, we do not want to have a, a council that is not diverse. And I'm not talking about race. I'm talking about socioeconomic as well. And we know that that cross all areas and it, it, it impacts us in different ways. Some of us can and some of us cannot. So we want a council that is open to everyone. We want a council that we're inviting others to be a member. And we want a council that is not based on uh, uh, whether you can afford something or not. And so based on that and those testimonies, uh, and there was there was a lot that was said. And people can go back to to the finance uh, meeting uh, yesterday to hear more from our colleagues. And I think that they made a very valid point. And for that reason, I'm going to say let's let's not do this at this time. Let's not. We have a lot of work to do, but we need a diverse voice to do it. And I would recommend that we vote against this. Thank you. Thank you, Council Lady Suara. Is there anyone else who's on this committee that would like to speak to this? Madam Chair, I would like to. I'm sorry, who? Rutherford. Yes, yeah, Councilman Rutherford. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm strongly in favor of this bill. Um, uh, I personally have, have had an issue with the fact that we as elected members of council have this benefit um, as essentially part-time employees. I, I know we work more than part-time hours, but we are still classified as part-time employees. And um, the idea of vesting in eight years and getting the lifetime benefit, which no other uh, employee or part-time employee of Metro gets, puts, puts us in a special class, if you will. And I, I'm just not comfortable with being in a special class uh, apart from the rest of Metro employees. I mean, we are compensated for what we do. You can argue whether or not it's enough for the hours that we put in, but we are compensated. Um, most people don't have a problem with the compensation we receive. Most people don't have a problem with the fact that we're given parking at the at the courthouse because it is our workplace for, for counsel. Um, but people do have an issue uh, with the fact that we're given this benefit. Uh, I don't have a problem with the benefit offered for while we serve because that does help uh, certain people to run for office that might not be able to otherwise if the benefit didn't exist. Uh, but but the lifetime portion, the lifetime commitment essentially of, of Metro government, of Metro taxpayers for council members that, that continue to use this after their service, uh, I think is a burden just too far on the taxpayers. And I heard a lot during the um, during the budget season uh, from people who were not happy with the fact that we raised their taxes 30 something percent and they raised this issue. They threw this issue back at us, if you will, to say not only did you raise our taxes, but you're getting this special perk at the same time. So, you know, what are you sacrificing uh, for service uh, to um, to Metro uh, when when the taxpayers are sacrificing so much that we're asking of them? Uh, so I'm, I'm strongly in favor of the bill. I, I don't think this is a, a benefit that the council members should receive. And 
and I'll, I'll, I'll be supportive of it. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Roberts, this is Councilmember Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Council Councilman Withers, please come um, I see that Councilmember O'Connell is with us and I was wondering if Councilmember O'Connell was wanting to, to move his amendment. I don't think, well. Or if, or if the committee would, would entertain that. I think I think we need to, to have, see if there's any more discussion before we do that. Is that okay with you, Councilman O'Connell? Uh, I suppose there might be discussion on the bill as amendment. I don't know the amendment. Um, I, I mean, I'm happy to speak to the amendment. Let members decide. I, I, you know, I, I have my understanding. I, I know that we're a little bit late. The amendment has not been moved. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. I, I will leave it to chair's discretion. I'm happy to speak to it at the chair's pleasure. I would like for you to, I just want to make sure if there's anyone else, just to be completely fair, if there's anyone else on this committee who would like to speak to this before we move, is there any, I think there's only two other people on the committee. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? Okay, Councilman O'Connell, would you like to speak to your amendment? Sure, the amendment is offered recognizing, I think what council members Hancock's intentions are and also understanding what council member Rutherford is speaking to. And finally, an acknowledgement that this is not ending access to healthcare. It is basically looking to, uh, to Council Member Rutherford's point, recognize that Metro employees right now are not eligible until they have uh, worked 20 years as Metro employees uh, for this. And in fact, in checking with Metro HR just yesterday, I learned that we couldn't even legally offer this to them before a period of 10 years, and they would have to accept the pension at that point uh, in order to qualify for it, right? So you know, in thinking through access to health insurance and then also uh, the affordability piece, this amendment is offered, recognizing that we don't wanna you know, sort of alter the expectations of people who ran with this expectation, but you know, again, recognize that this is not eliminating access to a benefit, it is merely changing the cost structure of it. We're delaying that until 2027 so that those people uh, who have already taken office will be able to serve out their terms uh, and not, not have the rug pulled up based on the expectations of the program. But I think in a forward-looking way, this is the fiscally responsible thing to do. Uh, and I offer the amendment with the hopes that it will improve the chance of the process. Is any, it, it, that might have just been Councilman O'Connell. You were kind of coming in and out a little bit. If anyone, is, no, that's okay. If anyone is unmuted though, please, please mute right, right now. See, I'll turn off my video to see if that helps. Um, see if that, that helps me out there. Um, okay. Um, Anyway, the amendment is there to extend the period in which the full benefit is available. Madam Chair, you're muted. <laughs> is there any discussion on Councilman O'Connell's amendment? Thank you, Councilman Yates. And just by point of Madam order, no one has yet moved. I'll go ahead and move the amendment. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, the amendment has been moved. <laughs> the amendment has been moved. And with that said, Madam Chair, I guess um, just to, to clarify, I think because Councilman O'Connell's audio was a little spotty, I guess uh, to make it clear what this amendment does, um, and this is a question, so someone correct me if I'm wrong, but so essentially this amendment uh, grandfathers in not only current council members in their second term, but to essentially all council members currently serving. Is that an accurate uh, reflection? That is correct. That is correct. Is there any discussion on Councilman O'Connell's amendment? Councilman O'Connell, you may as well put your video back up. I don't. I didn't see a dramatic difference when the video was on or off. It's kind of nice seeing your face. I certainly saw a dramatic difference, though I didn't hear one. Sure. 
Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to ask a question on the amendment. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm wondering, um, and, and Councilman O'Connell may have covered this and we just may not have caught it um, in, in his uh, spotty audio, but um, I'm wondering what brought about the um, the idea of basically grandfathering everybody in is, is was that simply done as a way to you know secure the the bill itself uh, for 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 the potential for for passing it um, or is there another reason for is it, is it like being seen as like we've promised this already to the existing folks so therefore we're going to hold to the promise uh, how, what's what's the view on, on that sure thank you Councilmember Rutherford the the general rationale there is that. People who might have run for their first term this time around might have expected that were they to serve next term as well, they would qualify for the full benefit, including the, effectively the stipend, right? The subsidy, the increased subsidy. I, I, you know, I fully support the fiscal responsibility element of this, and, and your point as well, the sort of privilege that this is, a public option that is available only to those that serve as council members and not even to the remainder of Metro employees. Um, but I would not want people to vote on something that effectively cancels something that they might have been expecting, counting on, relying on uh, when they first took office, as I know this is something that people going to hear it in this committee and probably on the floor tonight that people rely on this to some extent to, to make their decision about whether to run. And I appreciate that and I, um, I'll i be supportive of the amendment, uh, but I just want to express that I, I don't really like it, <laughs> but I understand where it's coming from. Um, and so I'll, I'll vote for the amendment. Madam so Chair. Yes, uh, Councilor Editora. Yes, ma'am. Um, I will be voting against the amendment uh, again on the based on the fact that yes, it does have uh, out uh, for it to be favorable to be people serving now. Uh, I think if we're going to get rid of it, we get rid of it, whether it's for us or not. A point that was made yesterday, which I thought was a good one, is that we're looking at not just us, but people that are coming after us to also be on this council. And so even if you give it to us or we vote for ourselves, then we're still not addressing the issue of other people that may want to serve on this council and need this benefit. It is uh, for any of us that is looking for a job, uh, you look at the salary package, and sometimes if the salary is not there enough, you look at the benefits to make up why you're joining the company. And in our case, uh, 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 that's what a lot of us are doing. And so um, I'm against the I'm against the amendment itself. I also want to say that, to my understanding, I know somebody said that Metro employees are not getting this benefit. Uh, my understanding is that SEIU uh, that actually support Metro employees is against this amendment. So I just want everybody to be aware of that. So I will be voting against the amendment and the bill as it is. Thank you. Thank you, Council Lady Suara. And, and I, on a personal note, I would like to say, when I first started this job, I took a, a council district that had primarily been not, not as had as responsive of a, um, council member historically from emails and, and calls and whatnot. And I, if I was in any other profession, I would have lost my job. There's no way you can take on the uh, a, 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 a district that hasn't been worked in a long time that's growing like the nation's was growing when I first took office and not make it a 40, 50 hour a week job. And so if I was in any other profession than real estate, I, I really, the first two years I was putting in 50, 60 hour weeks sometimes. And once I kind of got better at the job, that no longer was the case, but the insurance for me was life changing. And so from my perspective, it is absolutely something I can't support because I'm in hopes that other people, that if they get into a situation where their district is exploding with growth, they'll be able to give their district the attention it needs and deserves and not feel like that they're having to make a decision between their health care and their district. Do we have any other discussion? Looks like you got a lot of hands up. 
I, I'm sorry, I'm unable to see the hands up. So you're, um, you, uh, forgive me, but oh, that, now I can see them. Council Lady Portfield, you're the first one I saw go up. You have the floor. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Chair, and thank you for recognizing me, even though I'm not on the committee. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. Thanks. Sorry, I was having uh, some tech issues a little earlier. Um, uh, and again, thank you for recognizing me, even though I'm not on this committee. Uh, I will be, uh, I am supportive of uh, Councilman O'Connell's amendment. However, I will be voting against uh, the legislation. I do think that it becomes an equity issue. Uh, I remember watching this uh, when it came in 2017 and members of the Minority Caucus um, fought this uh, very legislation. Um, it's come up uh, several times. Um, on council in the past as well. Um, and again, for me, it is definitely uh, an equity issue. You have people that um, are running for council. I don't think that anyone runs for council for this uh, for this benefit. You know, the, the pay that we make is a very um, small amount in comparison to the amount of work that we do. So I don't think that anyone does it because of the benefit, but the benefit is a way to help ease some of the financial burden that people are experiencing. Um, me personally, I left a career um, where I had health care. I left a career where I had a pension and I was working towards um, a, a pension and a retirement. I left a career that I absolutely loved and adored to come serve my community and people shouldn't have to um you know sacrifice um their their earning potential or sacrifice their their family's um future finances because they want to serve their community and when we take away uh these types of benefits you are limiting the amount of people and the types of people that are able to run for these offices and you know we have to ask ourselves what type of council do we want to be and if we want to be a council yeah. that's going to represent all of nashville and all of the people of nashville then we have to have diversity on council that means we need minorities we need immigrants we need single parents we need married people single people we need some of everyone on council because everyone brings um, a different experience so this benefit is something that does uh, give people a chance to run people that thought that they could never run for council it does give them the opportunity to run and serve their community and, and run for office so um, and I understand that it doesn't take it away from people currently, but it would take it away after, you know, after that time oh. on uh, council. Um, but again, if you've served four or eight years uh, in this time, that's time that you're limiting your earning potential from your full-time job or time that, you know, you weren't maybe able to advance in your company um, because you had to spend so much time on council or it, in my case, started over with something completely different because you left the uh, left the job to serve the community. So um, I won't be in support and I will ask our colleagues to, um, to vote no as well. Thank you. Count, thank you, Council Lady Porterfield. Councilman Mendez. Thanks. Um, I'll keep it brief because I know this is uh, running really late. Um, hey, uh, anybody who uh, thinks they're going to get this um, benefit uh, into retirement, um, you should put as much faith in it as you put into uh, your confidence that Medicare or Social Security is going to be there. Um, for those of you who started at the same time I did, the amount of unfunded liability listed in the audit for this um, has more or less doubled since we've been in office from the mid two billions to 4.6 billion. And uh, I'm here to tell you that 10 years from now, people who are incoming council members will not have the same benefit um, because the process will have been reformed, changed in some way. And that doesn't necessarily mean how you should vote on this, um, but uh, no, nobody should be running around feeling like this is a done deal benefit that they're going to get to enjoy. Um, so thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, Councilman Mendez. Can you please put your hand up if you have a um, something you'd like to say? I can't see the the, the virtual hands. Is there any other discussion? Yes, Council Member Roberts. This is Council Member Hurt. And I actually had my hand up uh, while the committee was speaking, even before the amendment was um, presented. But th that's fine. I I'm patiently waiting. I can't um, I'm sorry. Your video's off. I'm, I'm sorry, Council Lady Hurt. That that's okay. I apologize. Um, but I too am against this. And I spoke yesterday about Councilmember Wallace 
uh, who served the council for almost 30 years. And recently he has been ill. And I know Councilman Mendez indicated yesterday that he does have the insurance and he was able to get it. But he not only served for those 30 years, but he continues to mentor um, many of us, the people of color. And having this benefit is uh, um, definitely something that's very much needed. Uh, Councilman Porterfield mentioned yesterday in budget finance, which I know clearly as well, when we go to the National League of Cities and we talk to different colleagues, we are not paid the same amount of money. We have um, much more responsibility. They have much more assistance. And um, you were talking about the kind of time that you spend when you first got on the council. I spent 40, 50 hours then, and I spend it now. And um, I think about, and, and you just, when you said what you did, it didn't even make me, I, I didn't even make, think about it yesterday, but I have a job that I work for an organization, a nonprofit that I've worked for for over 21 years. I did not have insurance. I did not get the insurance until I got on the council. Not that I wanted to, and during that time, I was very ill and, having this opportunity literally has saved my life. And I did not go to the hospital because I was unable to afford it. Um, and, and I had a very serious thyroid problem and I did not know it, but I just would not do it. And I think about those that are to come. If, if they do come and they need the insurance, I don't want it to be on my watch that I deny them that opportunity. Council member Suarez said she wasn't gonna talk about race, but I can say that this does disproportionately affects people of color because we are not afforded the same opportunities and the same uh, job opportunities, employment opportunities. And it has been um, in terms of our healthcare abilities and, and, and uh, needs. So I too feel that this is something that's very much needed and I want to make sure that those that come after us have the opportunity to have the same benefits that we've had. And I thank you uh, so much for giving me the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Council Lady Hurt. And I'm sorry again, I didn't see your hand. Is anyone, if anyone has their video off, Please put your video on so I can see your hand. I'm unable to see virtual hands raised. <clears throat> Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this? Going once, going twice. Okay, so we have, um, we have, um, we have, it's moved, it's seconded. I guess we will vote if there's no other discussion. Um, all in favor. No, we're, we're just on the amendment at this point, correct? You're correct. Thank yes, you, Councilman. Amen. Thank you, Councilman Young. So, is there anyone that would like to move the amendment, or is there any any other move? Is there anything else anyone would like to to say? Okay. Um, would you like to move the amendment, Councilman Young? It's been moved and seconded, I, I thought, but I'll move it again. I like moving. I know you and, do. And I'll second it again. Again, I like that. It's double done. So that's great. Covered. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. If there are there any opposed? Yes, opposed. Council is opposed and I'm opposed. So that's two, two opposed, and and can I just make sure from a roll call? Um, Young is. Are you for? I'm a yes on the amendment. Yes, on the amendment. Others, are you a yes on the amendment? I'm a yes on the amendment. Rutherford, are you a yes on the amendment? Yes on the amendment. 
And just to be clear, Suarez a no on the amendment, correct? No on the amendment. Okay. And Hauser and uh, Taylor are, are not in attendance. Okay, so we have we've we've voted on the amendment. Would you can we open up the so that's it? I'm sorry. So we need to move the uh, actual bill now, correct? So the bill has been moved, um, but at this point, I, I'm actually going to move for an indefinite deferral. Okay. Okay. So that's so. Do we have a second on that? Second. Great. So on the indefinite deferral, do we have a, all four say yes? Point of order, Chair. If the amendment was, if the bill was already moved, then don't you have to remove that movement from the table before you can indefinitely defer? Mr. Cooper, are you on here? Uh, I'm on here. A deferral motion takes precedent over any uh, pending motion to approve. Thank you. So we, so we're back on the deferral, correct? So all for the deferral, please say aye. 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 Any aye. against? No. And that was council, I'm sorry, who was that? Rutherford. Rutherford. Okay, so four in favor, one against. And so is that a one meeting deferral, Councilman Young? I'm moved for indefinite deferral. Sorry, indefinite deferral. So, Councilman Cooper, I mean, Mr. Cooper, can you help me here? Yes, yeah, so the recommendation is to defer indefinitely, four in favor, one against. Correct. And that's the last item on the agenda. And that's the last item on the agenda. There's no more. Thank you all. Councilmember Roberts, this is Councilmember Taylor. I'd like to be noted as uh, a yes on the indefinite deferral. In the Great. Yes, thank and, you. And welcome to the MAC board, Councilman Taylor. Well, when you, when you when you miss, that's what happens. That's what happens. Welcome to the board and thank you for your vote. So you're voting for an indefinite deferral. Is that correct? That is correct. So it's five in favor, one against. Okay. Thank you all for coming and we adjourned.